In my time stargazing, I've seen many unusual wonders in our night sky. I've seen galaxies that look like a whale. I've seen a galaxy that looks like a sombrero. I've even seen a galaxy that looks like a hamburger. And that wasn't just because I was hungry. In fact, I've seen even more unusual sights when looking at nebulae. I've seen dolphins, I've seen middle fingers, and well, I've even seen the Statue of Liberty. But if you were to ask me what are the seven coolest objects in our night sky that even a beginner could see, then these seven would be my favourites. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. Do you see that cluster of stars to my right? They are the Pleiades, otherwise known as the Seven Sisters. They're one of the easiest objects in our night sky to spot. You can see them in miraculous detail with even a cheap pair of binoculars. The Pleiades are a very young open star cluster. This group of stars is very densely concentrated with these gorgeous, hot blue luminous stars. They are relatively young in cosmic terms, estimated to have formed within the last 100 million years. They will only appear this spectacular for another 250 million years before it is estimated they will separate and disperse as a result of gravitational interactions with their nearby stellar companions. Once you've seen a star pattern up close once, I doubt they will ever go unnoticed again. Every time you look up at our night sky throughout autumn and winter, you will surely notice almost immediately this stunning stellar cluster that is home to a great number of these magnificent young blue stars. Next up is a fuzzy patch of light. It may look like a heavily concentrated cluster of stars, but there is a horror that lies at the core of this wondrous sight. Contained within this shot are over a trillion stars, the majority of which our eyes cannot see. But what we can see is a dim and blurry patch of light. This is a supermassive black hole that is currently in the midst of devouring countless stars as it sits at the centre of our nearest galactic neighbour. At only 2.5 million light years away, you are seeing with the naked eye the galaxy next door. This is the Andromeda Galaxy. It is the only galaxy that can be made out by observers from light polluted skies with the naked eye, and it's going to become more and more visible as time progresses. This is due to the fact that the Andromeda Galaxy is on a collision course with our own Milky Way. In just over 5 billion years, this will no longer be one of the seven coolest things you can see in our night sky, because now we'll have over a trillion more to choose from. Moving away from the relaxing overwater villas of the Maldives and the edge of desolate volcanoes in the Canary Islands, and now instead onto the vibrant nightlife of the Italian city most famous for its architectural blunders, Pisa. I'm stood here around the base of the Leaning Tower of Pisa at 11.30pm on a Thursday night. I know, do these kids not have curfews? God! And I'm pointing my camera, not my telescope, I'm pointing my camera towards this bright point of light peeking from behind the Leaning Tower of Pisa. This is what myself and many of us refer to as a gem of our solar system the famous ringed planet, Saturn. And I'm just going to take a snapshot just there, because the video itself was very shaky. Bear in mind I am using an outrageously high magnification on my $600 camera to get this shot, hence why it is a little shaky, so apologies. The detail you can resolve is incredible, but I must say, with even a $100 telescope, you can see much more of Saturn. But the fact we can see anything with what is considered today to be rudimentary equipment is phenomenal. Everyone who has an interest in astronomy will be able to recollect one object that got them hooked on the hobby. One sight in our night sky that made their heart flutter and their head go, Els Bells, isn't that a sight to behold? For many people, that is seeing Saturn for the first time through a pair of binoculars or a telescope. But for me, there's another planet that's even brighter and has a lot more going on than Saturn. One that I have spent entire nights watching before. This is Jupiter and the four Galilean moons.
If you're watching this right now and you're thinking, I'd love to go out and see Jupiter for myself, but I just wish it wasn't as light polluted where I live, don't worry about it, because light pollution will not stop you from seeing the largest planet in our solar system. You can see it in central London. You can see it in central Pisa. The only thing that's gonna stop you is clouds. Thankfully, right now, we don't have many clouds, so we can see the planet Jupiter behind us. It's very easy to find in the night sky because it's one of the brightest things you will see. In fact, for most of the part of the year, it is the brightest object in our night sky. Okay, so this is gonna be a real test of how steady my hands are because in order to make sure I can see Jupiter with such a long lens, I'm gonna to have to keep this very still. So let's give it a shot. All right, so Jupiter's fairly easy to see because it is a very bright point of light in our night sky. I'm gonna point it up towards Jupiter and I'm gonna zoom in. I can see Jupiter. I can see the bright point of light. Gonna zoom in. And I can see one moon, two. Okay, I, I think I got like a d fairly decent shot of it then. Um, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a still from that video so you can see it better. In both of the shots I originally took, I had overexposed the video so that you could see the four dimmer points of light that are Jupiter's four Galilean moons, but it also washed out any of the visible detail on Jupiter's surface. When I reduced the exposure, I could just faintly make out the bands on Jupiter, as well as its great red spot. Once again, with a beginner telescope or binoculars, you'll be able to see much more surface detail, and of course Jupiter's great red spot, with much more ease. I have spent hours and hours and hours watching Jupiter in the past, and that's because of its four largest moons. Nothing is as entrancing in our night sky as watching this grand celestial dance occur, especially trying to decipher which moon is which based on the shadow being cast onto Jupiter's surface. The setup I used to capture the sequence cost $800, and it took most of the night to finish the sequence. And that is helped by the fact that Jupiter is the fastest rotating planet in our solar system. It takes roughly 10 hours for it to complete one day. Astronomy, more than most hobbies, requires patience. It means taking time and care with setting yourself up for a night of viewing. Normally, I will have one telescope for imaging and another telescope or a pair of binoculars for observing. And by far, the most enjoyable thing to do is not to input coordinates of a deep sky object and track its position. It's to just randomly point your telescope or binoculars up to the heavens above and look. The longer you look, the more you will find. And that is how I came across this object for the first time. This is the Hercules Globular Cluster. It is a supermassive collection of 700,000 stars. This globular cluster is one of over 100 others that orbit the center of the Milky Way. If you're interested in contacting aliens, then this densely populated cluster of stars might be one of the first places you'd start, right? Well, we did just that sending the Arecibo message towards this cluster in 1974 in an almost futile attempt at first contact. All right, so in about one minute and 22 seconds, something very special is gonna appear behind me above that volcano. It's gonna be coming just up over there next to the constellation of Ursa Major or the Big Dipper. It's gonna to rise to the left of the peak of the volcano. It's gonna start off fairly dim and then get really bright before slowly fading away into the blackness of our night sky. And for me, the most special thing about this is that it doesn't cost you a penny. <laughs> you can just step outside, look up at the night sky at the right time, and you will see wonders like this that we're about to see right now. I actually got my calculations wrong on when this wonder would appear, but that's likely a result of us being 2,000 meters above sea level and it appearing from behind the view of an active volcano. Thankfully, my little brother was still recording and managed to capture it as it slowly fades into view. Okay, so behind me is a very exciting Thing. It's that bright point of light just over there that looks like a star, but it's not a star. It's something much more exciting. As you can probably tell right now, it is moving across the sky. For it is no star. It's not even a planet. That bright point of light just behind me is the International Space Station. <sighs> okay. Carrying a number of different astronauts. Okay. <laughs> 
Carrying a number of different astronauts from all across our planet, it is our first step to exploring the cosmos. Look how bright it is right now. It's as bright as the planet Jupiter at its peak. That is our first step to exploring space. It might seem hard to believe, but right now, the ISS, the International Space Station, is actually only 100 kilometers from where we are, which in space terms is a very short distance. So why is it we can even see the International Space Station? Is it really big? Well, not really, to be honest. It's about the same size as a football pitch, or a soccer pitch, or a rugby pitch, or any sports pitch, okay? It's quite large, but not mind-blowingly large. So it's impressive that something that's 100 kilometers away, we can still see. Well, it's all due to the fact it has a number of solar panels on its side. And when it gets to a certain point in our night sky, shortly after sunset or sunrise, the sunlight, even though we can't see it here on Earth, is reflecting off the solar panels from the ISS. And that's how we're able to see it here on Earth. It happens fairly often because the ISS orbits around the planet 16 times every single day. It completes an orbit in about 90 minutes. It's moving at 17 and a half thousand miles per hour. So that's why it moves across our sky so quickly. It doesn't really matter too much where you are on our planet. You can see it at different points of the year, but you can check online on websites such as Heavens Above, type in your location and it'll tell you exactly when it will come into view, the magnitude, its brightness, and when it will go out of view. And it really is a spectacular thing to see, to know that there are people aboard that bright point of light passing across our sky at 17 and a half thousand miles per hour. It is mind blowing. And those brave few souls that are aboard the International Space Station right now are amongst the few people that have took the first steps for us, the first steps off our planet, the first steps towards exploring other worlds and venturing to other stars. And although they may only be 100 kilometers away from us now, which in terms of earthly distance isn't that much, some people travel further than that every single day to go to work, it doesn't seem like a big distance, but it's the fact that we have ventured into outer space. We are there. We can say that we have made our first steps towards accomplishing our new goal, and that is to explore the stars. Which brings us to the final object. This is, for me, the coolest object we can see in our night sky, the most wondrous, and it is located just there. That is the constellation of Orion. If you know much about astronomy, you may have already identified Orion's belt. Those three bright stars that are going downwards in a diagonal line. But what lies just to the side of that belt in Orion's sword is arguably, for me, the greatest wonder of our night sky. It is the coolest thing you can see. Located in its sword is the great Orion Nebula, a colossal cloud of dust and gas. It is a stellar nursery in which new stars are being born as we speak. New solar systems, such as our very own, are forming in that faint, fuzzy, purple patch of light right now. It is one of the first things I ever looked at for a telescope and arguably the one sole object that got me truly hooked on astrophotography. With a beginner's telescope, I looked at the Orion Nebula and I could not believe my eyes the fact that something as mesmerizing as that was able to be seen in the night sky without much more equipment than a cheap telescope. It is a wondrous sight and that is why for me, out of the seven coolest things in our night sky, this one 
takes the cake. This one is top of that list. It is a thing of beauty. You know what, as incredible as astronomy is, and it is amazing, I'm a little bit distracted right now because across the beachfront just here, I'm seeing the occasional blue light flicker amongst the sand. And that's because there is bioluminescent plankton washing up on the shore. And every now and then you see them light up. And as they light up, you see a crab race over to eat it up immediately. I spent the next two hours watching these crabs scavenge the sapphire gems that were being washed ashore. A fantastic night of stargazing capped by one of the most beautiful sights in nature. These were the seven coolest objects you can see in the night sky. Let me know in the comments down below which of the seven was your favorite, or if you believe there is an even more amazing object in the night sky to be seen that I left off the list. Thanks for watching. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.